Here we go. So uh, let's talk. This is called graphing rational functions. This will be based on the same thing we did last week, um, but it's going to be more awesome equations. Now, there's one part I didn't really explain well in my lesson yesterday, so I'm going to go through it right now. Okay, so this is how it goes. I want to talk about uh, horizontal asymptotes. So this is maybe the part that was not uh, clear in yesterday's note. Uh, step number one, if the degree of denominator is greater than the degree of the numerator. Um, example, uh, f of x equals x over x squared plus 1. Okay, so let's say we have a graph of something like that, which is the sort of stuff we'll be dealing with. What is the horizontal asymptote going to be? I just go to words infinity when x goes y that goes in. When x is going to be 0, okay? So we're going to have an asymptote at um, y cannot equal 0 as x goes to infinity from a matrix. Now you probably saw in yesterday's graph that it actually crossed 0 in the middle. Okay, which was wacky and probably frightened you a little bit, okay? But all it is is just in the middle it's okay to break because there's weird things that can happen. But as you head to infinity, that's what these asymptotes are for. Okay, you guys have seen this in grade 11. Okay, so remember I talked about grade 11 for some of you. We did graphs like this. It was like 4 over x squared in the graph, okay? Um, it would be like that. Number two. He was going to say, and this is the same note, you talked about advanced functions. If the degree of numerator um, equals the degree of denominator. I uh, use infinity limits um, to find horizontal asymptotes. Okay, so the example will be um, the limit of x approaches infinity of 5x cubed minus 2x all over 2x cubed plus 1. Okay, can someone remind me from the beginning of the year? I wish Tyler Fast was here today because he missed all this stuff. How do I evaluate that limit? I'm going to get, by substitution, it's going to be infinity over infinity. So what do I do here? Can I think back? Divide by? Divide by x cubed. So it's going to be equal. Uh, the limit of x approaches infinity, uh, 5 minus 2 over x squared, all over 2 plus 1 over x cubed. Okay, Nate, why do I have to do that? Yeah, to get rid of them. What's 1 over infinity? Nothing. Nothing. So this is just equal to then, uh, this is a horizontal asymptote, then of uh, y cannot equal 5 over 2. Is this coming back? Oh, sorry, I just sort of threw the limit at the note here. I um, yesterday, sorry about that. All right, does that make sense, what I just did there? So this is from the beginning of the year, it's infinity limits and stuff. Okay, so hopefully that's good. And that's as fast, but is that, we're good? This is coming back to you, yes? Okay, finally, it's number three, which is the one that you will get on your test. I shouldn't say that, you will much sooner you on your test. Number three, this is so excited, there's going to be a little more stars around this one. Um, we start the next. There's going to be an oblique asymptote. Um, when and the degree of the numerator is greater than the degree of the denominator. say long division to find it, or synthetic, I guess. Okay, and I'll say brackets the example one. Because I want to do an example of this one right now. And you guys have probably talked briefly in advanced functions about oblique asymptotes, I hope. 
Okay, we're gonna do much more cool things with them today. Now, if they were remembering advanced functions, they were only straight lines. We could theoretically have a quadratic asymptote. Okay, Nate's shaking his head. What that would be though, if it would be like an x cubed divided by an x, right? The difference would be an x squared. We do a cubic asymptote. Don't go crazy now, okay? You can do anything you want. And the idea is, oh, it's just a difference in degree between the numerator and the denominator. It's going to be what the overall thing is. You could have like a square root asymptote. We'll get, we'll deal with all that stuff later on. Okay, okay we're going to the three rules. Did you come back for advanced functions? Yes? Okay, here we go to example one. Sorry, I'm too excited here. I'm going to slow down. Example one. Now this just looks like a cool barrel of fun, this question. What would you say, Michael? Mm -hmm. I'd say it totally does. Okay, now, this one here looks like it could be a little bit tedious, um, but we'll go through this to make sure that we're good. We're going to do the same things we did. Oh, hold on a second. I'm going to change that question. I'm going to change that question. I'm going to be good cops today. All right, um, so what you should have right now, and I'm going to embarrass Harry if you don't Harry, you want to open up your binder for me, please? Okay, so Harry's notes are impactful. Let me say that first of all. Secondly, well, one pack. Um, secondly, he has wonderful graph paper lined up right there, and this is what you should be doing today's uh, graph on in painstaking detail. If your graph, he had us a second blank piece of graph paper already set up, for today's lesson, like he knew that mm -hmm. he didn't finish graphing the second one from last day, but you should leave yourself a nice um, graph. One quarter of the paper is fine, one half, either one of those is okay. What I'm going to do, especially in this one, if you don't graph paper, you need to borrow some, please talk to your neighbor. I don't have any for you, but your neighbor might, okay? Um, as we go through this graph, I'm going to put different parts on the graph just to make sure it's good, okay? Um, I could have, theoretically, one sec, please. I could have left that. I could have left that denominator as messy like I did before. Why do I like this denominator better? It factors, right? And that's going to help us out. You could use plot formula to get weird roots, but I don't want to have to do that. So let's go to my solution right now. Step number one is going to be what? The main thing. And if these steps are in your head yet, that's OK. So can somebody please tell me other than Ben how I find the domain of a rational function like this? Yeah, go ahead. Um, the roots of the product. Right on. Okay, so my restrictions will be the roots of the product. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to call that, um, what is that, x minus 4, x plus 1. Means keep going. Lovely. Okay, next is going to be intercept. This is only my y intercept. I'm going to do. All right, Amy, what is my y intercept for this graph, please? Zero you know, negative one. Now, by the way, I'm going to be zipping through this. I told this to my Actually, I hit pause for one sec here. The rest of the world doesn't need to hear this. Okay, um, let's, next is going to be the asymptote, so this is a new part. Um, and you might have some advanced functions, depending on how it works. So in order to get the asymptotes, what we're going to say is um, it's an oblique asymptote. Mm -hmm. 
Can someone please tell me why this is a Blue Johnson coach? Right. The numerator has a degree three, and the denominator has degree two. Is that okay if I write it like that? Can you make out what I mean by that? Num and den, numerator and denominator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, long division. There might be a way to do synthetic division with quadratics, but I don't know it. If you can do it with quadratics, go ahead. Okay, I can't, so I'm going to use long division. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Mr. Savvy, you jerk, you did that on purpose. You're right, I did. Um, but that's how I roll out some things. I don't know what you're saying. Uh, when you're doing this question, please remember to put that plus zero x in there. Okay, when you're doing long division, all right, um, because you need like that placeholder in there. Can someone think back to advanced functions and give me the rundown of how I actually do this? Oh, no, we were on 4x. 4x first, okay? Because what you're looking for is the number of times that this times what equals 4x cubed. So that's going to be 4x. And I'm going to line it up right there. Okay, so I'm going to put in there 4x times x squared is 4x cubed. 4x times negative 3x is negative 12x squared, and 4x times negative 4 is negative 16x. Okay. Is this slow going back for people? Please be brave, please be brave if it's not. Okay, let's get subtracting then. 4x cubed minus 4x cubed is nothing. This is going to go that. This is going to turn into 10x squared uh, plus 16x. All right, can someone with a great deal of self-confidence tell me how to finish this one up? What do we do next? Yeah, go ahead. Um, plus 5 at the top, and then it's zero. Yeah, sorry. Um, plus 10. Plus 10, yeah. You're thinking about back to that. But the one thing also, make sure you bring down that plus 4. You right? You right? Make mm -hmm. sure that comes down. Okay, so it's going to be 10x mm -hmm. squared. What is that? Minus 30? Mm -hmm. X. And that turns to be 46x plus 44. Okay, this is your remainder. You've probably never had a remainder in advanced functions or in anything like that. Why is it okay to have a remainder when it comes to an asymptote? Yeah, well, the asymptote is 4x plus 10. But what this extra remainder is, is you remember how always for an asymptote you come very, very close to it, but you don't hit it? This is that little extra part that comes very, very close to it, but doesn't hit it. Okay, so like when x is equal to 1,000, you're going to be off by just a smidge, which isn't much. Okay, right? The idea, right? So um, this is the extra part. So therefore, my asymptote is... is y cannot equal uh, 4x plus 10. Okay, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to graph this now at this point, okay, before I get to all the calculus. Okay, so can anyone think back to grade 9 and remind me how to graph uh, y equals 4x plus 10? How do we graph that? Because people forget. Sorry? How do you graph this y equals 4x plus 10 back to grade 9? Uh oh. Okay, good, okay, good. So I'm going to start at 10, and then I'm going to go up 4 and over 1 like that, okay? So I'm going to make a fairly accurate graph as good as I can here. Uh, actually, what I think I'm going to do is stop the video, and I'm going to make my graph magically appear, and then come back.